the front lines, an exclusive interview with an American soldier, an Iraqi war vet who deserted the army and who just today surrendered. We found out about this story from the soldier's mom who contacted us. She said she was concerned about her son. Why did he leave and what happens to him now? Gary Tuckman reports. Don Garten is saying goodbye to his girlfriend. He's a fugitive. Over the last half year, he's been on the run. I need to get this behind me. I can't keep uh, looking over my shoulder. So with his tearful mother also watching, this soldier who served in the infantry for 16 months is about to walk into an Illinois State Police Station. We'll show you what's about to happen in a second. But first, some background. Garten is a deserter. He's been on the run for nearly a half year. We interviewed a much different looking Garten last week on the Internet because he was a fugitive, and we did not know his location. He says he has post-traumatic stress disorder, didn't get the help he needed from the military, and basically felt he was a danger to his fellow soldiers. Would you want to be um, that person that gets a phone call that says um, your brother, your sister, your significant other um, was killed today by another soldier because of mental problems he was dealing with? The 25-year-old comes from a military family, was in ROTC in high school, and re-enlisted in the Army just last year. He says he was then sent to Texas. Once I got down to Fort Bliss, um, it was all downhill. I mean, my mental stability just slowly started dwindling away. The Army specialist says he didn't turn himself in earlier because he was afraid he would be sent back to active duty. You think you made a responsible decision to desert? Yes. His mother lives in a farmhouse surrounded by cornfields in central Illinois. She says she did not know her son's whereabouts for the last several months, although she did arrange rendezvous to see him. When he told her he was going to leave the Army, I said, this will follow you the rest of your life. You're a good person. You've served your country. Um, it made me really angry, and I was incensed that my kid was trying to get help. The Army says that while desertions are up because of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, it has treatment options for troubled soldiers like Garten. But Garten claims he had no choice, and that's why it's come to this. I mean, I was a horrible person. I was in a dark place. So what will happen with Don Garten? A U.S. Army spokesman we talked with told us that for soldiers like Garten, here's what could occur. A dishonorable discharge, forfeiture of pay, and up to five years in a military lockup. When Garten emerges from the police station, he's in handcuffs. He's led to a squad car by surprised Illinois State troopers who didn't expect to see a military deserter today. He will be transferred to U.S. Army custody. Do you still consider yourself a patriot? Um, I think it would be foolish for me to consider myself a patriot being in a situation that I am in. What do you consider yourself? I'm just a person just trying to live my life, and I can't live my life in the military. Garten is now living his life behind bars. He is not eligible for bond. So, Gary, what happens to him now? I mean, what happens next? Well, Anderson Garten right now is in this county jail in the tiny town of Eureka, Illinois. You may have heard of Eureka because it's the home of Eureka College, the alma mater of late President Ronald Reagan. But the, under U.S. military code, the Army now has 30 days to pick up Garten for court-martial procedures. So Garten could be in this little county jail until the beginning of November. And what is the Army or the Pentagon saying about his case? Yeah, we were very curious what they say about his specific situation, but as of now, the Pentagon says it is not commenting about his specific situation, at least for the time being. The other stories we're following, Randy Kay has a 360 vote. Randy? Anderson, a 360 follow now. Texas Governor Rick Perry still will not answer our questions about why he removed three members of a state panel investigating whether an innocent man was put to death. In fact, he's ruled out any interview this week. We brought you the story last week of Cameron Todd Willingham, who was executed under Perry's watch five years ago. New evidence suggests Willingham wasn't guilty of arson or killing his three children when their house went up in flames. Today, supporters of Willingham started a petition to clear his name. The ex-fiance of a cast member from The Real Housewives of Atlanta has died after a fight outside an Atlanta strip club. Ashley A.J. Jewell was engaged to Candy Burris until about two months ago and appeared in some episodes of that show. A suspect has been arrested in that beating death. 
Comedian David Letterman isn't afraid to crack jokes about his own sex and extortion scandal. Here's what he said when he taped his show tonight. Did your weekend just fly by? <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest with you folks, right now I would give anything to be hiking on the Appalachian Trail. I, I got into the car this morning and the navigation lady wasn't speaking to me. Tonight, Letterman also showed a more serious side, apologizing to his staff and family. He said, quote, the other thing is my wife, Regina. She has been horribly hurt by my behavior, and when something happens like that, if you hurt a person and it's your responsibility, you try to fix it. Let me tell you, folks, I got my work cut out for me, end quote. The attorney for the CBS producer accused of trying to extort $2 million from Letterman is firing back. David Letterman didn't give his side of the story. David Letterman gave what he wanted the public to know. He wanted to get out ahead of the story, and that's exactly what he did. He's a master at manipulating audiences. That's what he does for a living. So to think that David Letterman gave the entire story and there's nothing more to be said is simply wrong. And check out this incredible video from Bangkok, Thailand, where a British man is lucky to be alive after his bungee cord malfunctioned. Wow, that's hard to watch. He hit the water of a lagoon at, get this, 80 miles per hour. Now, the man spent a month in a hospital recovering from collapsed lungs, a ruptured spleen, and oh other God. injuries. Wow, that's tough to see. That'll make you never want to bungee jump. I never I mean, have. I never, <laughs> and I've never had the desire to, but I don't think I will Yep, now, that's done ever. it. If anyone has ever made fun of a kid with an accordion, I give you tonight's shot. I didn't know this was real. Apparently it is real. Shows you the accordion can do a whole lot of, lots of things. Same respect. You should give the accordion the same respect as... I don't know, the clarinet, the oboe, the glockenspiel. Sure. Yeah. yeah. According to, uh, wow. by the way, accordions.com, which is where we went to to find out some more information about accordions, they first appeared in 1777. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah. This is great. You have more? And we think maybe he was playing Vivaldi. On the next 360, a stunning secret revealed beneath the glitz of Las Vegas. Get an up-close look at an underground world. Weeknights on 360, 10 p.m. Eastern. I'll see you then. You can't just sit behind a desk all the time and, and think you know what's going on in the world. You have to go out and see it for yourself. You gotta smell it, you gotta taste it, you gotta see it.